Hello, I am Dr. Shridhar Tumani, Consultant Interventional Cardiologist at R. Integor Hospital, Mukundapur, Kolkata. Today, I will be discussing about a very important question that arises in my patient's mind regarding cholesterol or lipid abnormalities. Now, firstly, you have to know that there are different lipid fractions uh, in the blood. If you do a lipid profile from a laboratory, you find different measurements like total cholesterol, LDL, VLDL, triglyceride, HDL. So, there are different fractions of the lipids. Uh, so, patients also, some of the patients, they have an elevated total cholesterol. Some of the patients have elevated triglyceride only. Some of the patients have elevated LDL. Uh, some of the patients have low HDL and some of the patients have combination of these different abnormalities. So, I would like to uh, make you aware of the different fractions in a bit uh, uh, nutshell and tell you about which one to be worried about and which one you can ignore. So, basically uh, the most uh, dangerous or uh, the most important lipid fragment that can lead to heart attacks or brain strokes or other diseases like kidney failure or blocks in the vascular system is LDL. So, LDL is the ultimate culprit among all these lipid fractions. And whenever we set a target of our therapy in our patients, uh, suppose a heart attack patient comes to us, we need to monitor their lipid levels, we need to control their lipid levels, we keep LDL as our first target. If we can control LDL in, a, in an optimal way, so we expect the other cholesterol fragments also to be to come down to optimal levels and to reduce the risk to the maximum uh, magnitude if we can control this LDL fragment. Now, this LDL normally it remains around the level of 100 and in some patients uh, we find it to be elevated in up to different magnitudes like 120, 140, 150 and when it crosses 190 or even more than that I often find LDL to be 200 to 300 or even more. So, these are the extremely uh, dreadful situations because in such patients there is very high risk of premature coronary artery disease or brain strokes and these patients having an LDL of more than 190 probably in most of the cases they are suffering from some genetic abnormalities which we clap together as familial hypercholesterolemia or familial dyslipidemias. Now, there are different types and subtypes of these, uh, these genetic abnormalities that is not a, a subject of discussion today, but many of these patients have genetic abnormalities. Why am I, am, am I stressing on this point? Because if a patient comes to my chamber with an LDL of more than 200, I, I expect uh, this similar genetic abnormality to be present among other family members of that patients, particularly the first degree relatives that is the parents, the siblings, brothers, sisters and the offsprings that is son, daughter or children. So, I always advise these patients to have a lipid profile done in all such first degree relatives of that patient including children at a very young age. Because if they have a genetic abnormality of familial hypercholesterolemia, that can lead to very early high LDL levels. Even at an age of 8 years or 5 years, the patient, the child can have a very high LDL. And this child will have a very high risk of developing a heart attack at the age of 20 or 25. So, unless you are detecting it at, the, at an age of 8 or 10 years, you cannot treat it and you cannot prevent these premature heart attacks. So, this is why I am repeatedly stressing on the importance of identifying these genetic abnormalities and in our chamber by seeing some clinical signs and symptoms we can very easily detect or many a times we can detect that yes this patient is suffering from a genetic abnormality which is leading to his high LDL levels. So, this is an important portion of my talk that you have to understand that LDL more than 190 can be genetic and so all your family members have to be screened. Next, uh, LDL can be high due to other factors as well like your wrong diet, 
your other environmental factors you are suffering from diabetes or you are hypertensive and so, so other i mean there can be thyroid abnormalities there can be kidney abnormalities that is leading to your elevated ldl or cholesterol so that part you have to treat with medicines recently we have uh, I mean, there have been development of certain injectable uh, uh, medications which can reduce your LDL to very low levels. So, uh, that is one promising part of the medical therapy. Now, if the patient has suffered from a heart attack or having a suspected coronary artery disease, in them, the target LDL is very low, less than 70 or less than 55 and in the indian subset of population those are suffering from recurrent heart attacks suppose the patient had suffered from a heart attack twice in them the ldl should be less than even 30 milligram per dl so you can understand that how aggressively ldl and how uh, i mean what is the magnitude of treatment or ldl lowering that is necessary for these patients to give to get benefit so that is why we need high level of medications, high doses of medications and sometimes new injections that are available nowadays in the market. So this is regarding LDL. Now let us discuss little bit about the other fragments because if the other fragments are also abnormal like the total cholesterol, like the triglyceride, so that is that can also lead to heart attacks or strokes. So this triglyceride again is very important in the Indian population or Southeast Asians as a, uh, to be whole because in Southeast Asia or in the Indians, there is a particular trend of obesity where we have central abdominal obesity, we have bulky abdomens, the fat in the Indians is deposited mainly in the abdomen and that is most dangerous for heart diseases. This is called central adiposity or central obesity or abdominal obesity. In Europe or America, we find obese people, but they have less of abdominal fat and more of subcutaneous fat, which is less dangerous. But in the Indians, we have less of subcutaneous fat, that is fat under skin is less, fat in the abdomen is more, which is most dangerous. And this central obesity along with diabetes, metabolic syndrome, they lead to elevated triglyceride level. So that is why the high triglyceride is the most important or most common lipid abnormality among the Indians, where the treatment is almost similar medications and there are some different groups of medications which we sometimes advocate in hypertriglycerideemias uh, that, that uh, your cardiologist will advise. Another important thing you have to remember, if your triglyceride which should, which should be ideally less than 150, if that comes more than 500, then there is every chance of pancreatitis which is a deadly disease again. So that is also important and has to be looked for and treated. Uh, now, HDL, HDL is good cholesterol. We want HDL to be more than 45 or 55 in males and females and that gives you protective effects from heart attacks. Now, if HD, HDL is low, then there are hardly one or two medications which can elevate your HDL, but uh, those medications have side effects. So, the more important thing to elevate your HDL level is exercise exercise increases your good cholesterol that is HDL. So this is something to know about the different lipid fragments. But overall what to do if you have a dyslipidemia? What to do if you have uncontrolled cholesterol or LDL or triglycerides? Number one is diet. Most importantly, you have to restrict your fat intake. You have to change your dietary pattern. You have to decrease your fried food intake. You have to restrict your fat intake to less than 10% or 15% of your entire daily diet. The trans fats has to be even lowest that is less than 1% of your diet. Trans fats are found in recooked oils. Suppose if you go to a fast food center and you uh, order a egg roll, you will find that the rolls are being fried repeatedly in the same oil. So that is the recooked oil. The same oil is being cooked and heated again and again. The more number of times you cook an oil, the more trans fats increases and that is most dangerous. 
so this is important another question i commonly face regarding the use of white oils so many of my patients they say that after seeing the advertisements in the television i use white oil every day every food item i cook in white oil that is not recommended that is not good you have to use mustard oil versus white oil in a 60 40 proportion so 60 percent of your total oil usage should be mustard oil 40 percent should be uh, white oils and among white oils you can safely use sunflower oil safflower oil olive oils rice bran oil but do not never i mean never use coconut oil or palm oil which is worst which has the highest content of bad lipids and cholesterols so most importantly you have to reduce your oil intake it is not about what type of oil you are using it is about how what amount you are using so we recommend that for a person the recommended oil intake per month is one liter maximum oil intake so if you have four family members your total monthly usage of oil should be four liters or less and these four liters two liters will be white oil two liters will be mustard oil so accordingly you can very easily plan your dietary oil intake and now patients who have very high ldls they have to restrict their oil intake to I mean even 50% or less than that not even 1 liter per month it, it has to be even much much lower you have to change your dietary pattern from fried foods to boiled foods you have to stop taking fast foods in in the or or preserve preservative or i mean those fried ready-made cooked fruits from the centers or fast food stalls so this is very important number two is exercise exercise is very important uh, 40 30 to 45 minutes work a day for five days a week is good enough along with that you can go to gymnasiums and you can do some aerobic exercises also and you have to stop smoking or other addictions and obviously if you have an elevated or altered lipid levels you have to take medications so medications will be prescribed by your doctor you have to follow those dosages sometimes these medications cause little bit of muscle pain muscle ache so that will be adjusted by your uh, physician so don't worry about that but take your medications and these medications often you have to continue lifelong so do not discontinue this without advice of your cardiologist so uh, ldl is a worst thing you you take my word ldl can cause uh, dangerous cardiac fatal cardiac events or cerebrovascular events and if you have an elevated ldl please aggressively you have to treat it and you have to do other investigations also like tmt eco to evaluate whether you already have developed some ischemia or some coronary blocks and accordingly you have to treat it so that's it uh, regarding lipids take good care of your lipids take care of your dietary habits and take medications in a regular basis thank you